But we're going to be coming from Luke chapter 5, and the title today was just Gone Fishing. And I wanted to explore how Jesus met his disciples, because I believe that has a bigger meaning whenever you follow the story up until now. So again, if you want to follow along in Luke chapter 5, and yeah, I have a paper Bible here. Uh, I'm not reading off my phone, not reading off the computer, so I apologize. It says, one day Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He was always drawing a crowd. And he saw by the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little bit from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Well, first I want to point out, Peter must have been listening. He must have been hearing Jesus nearby talking, seeing the crowd gathering. But this was his profession. He would have been fishing uh, every day. His dad was probably a fisherman. His grandpa was probably a fisherman. It's something that he was taught by trade. So it would have been abnormal for a rabbi, a minister of that time, to say, let's go fishing again, put out your nets. He would have probably thought he was crazy because... He knew the best time to go fishing. He knew the best place to go fishing. And he hadn't caught anything all night, but he recognized the authority of Jesus. And he said, Master, okay, because you said so, I will do that. Uh, as the story continues, it says in verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So they left, or so they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. Well, I want to point out at this time that Fish would have been the currency. They would have been fishing to sell in a local market uh, for food. Uh, this would have been a very valuable catch to them to fill their boats to the point that they were sinking. And yet they left it behind. So I want to challenge you. Are you willing to leave behind what's good to go after what's great? Are you willing to leave behind something that is going good to go after something that is great? Uh, and these men did that. It doesn't say any doubt, doesn't say any hang up. They said they left everything. And by no means do I want to compare myself to the disciples because I know I am nowhere near what they are. But I, many of you know that I've attended the same church for the last 10, 11 years. Uh, I've served there diligently. Uh, I love them. They're great people. But I've decided to take this next step and start starting point ministry. I wanted to do something that I felt was greater, something that I felt that was I was called to do. Uh, as many of you know, I became ordained about three years ago. And this is something that's been on my heart for the last three years. But now was the time to launch this ministry. Now is the time that I want to begin to use every available resource online through social media, through Facebook. We have an Instagram page. I'm going to have a website here. I want to use every available means to reach those who are lost so that they will know Christ as well as, or they will know Christ the same way that I do. So these men left everything that was valuable to them because they recognized the power of Jesus. Speaking of power of Jesus, I had my five-year-old in the car today and she's screaming at the top of her lungs and old him, there's power in the name of Jesus. And I'll tell you, my five-year-old is my inspiration. She is definitely my energy. She yells at all the time. She believes wholeheartedly in Jesus. And if I just had a little bit of that passion that she had, I can't imagine what God would do in my life. But the story goes that Jesus, uh, these men, these disciples, these 12 men, along with many others, follow Jesus for the next three years. He teaches them. He spends life with them. He eats with them. He builds relationship with them. And that's what he desires with us is a relationship with him. And then as 
Many of you know the Easter story. He is crucified on Friday night. The disciples, they disperse. Uh, they, they're scared. They run away. And Jesus is crucified on the cross. And then on Sunday, he raises again. And we find after his resurrection, he begins to reveal himself to the disciples and show that he is not a ghost. He is not a spirit, but he's a real man resurrected from death. And when you follow a little bit longer in the story, you find yourself in John uh, chapter 21. And in John chapter 21, uh, Jesus reveals himself to them again. And here we find the disciples fishing. Just as the disciples were found the very first time fishing, they're found fishing again. You see, I find when we don't have a purpose, when we don't know what we are supposed to do, we go back to what's comfortable. It may not always be what's right. Many of us find the stuff that was wrong is what's comfortable, so we go back to it. And so we pick up in John chapter 21. And it says, after Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got on the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Doesn't that sound like when Jesus first met them? They were fishing, but they caught nothing. And again, they were fishing, but they caught nothing. See, we can do nothing apart from Jesus. We need Jesus with us so that we can conquer all. Jesus is our power. Jesus is our strength. And apart from him, we can do nothing. But then it says in verse 4, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? Isn't it interesting how the dynamic has changed? Early on in Luke, they refer to him as master, and we find at the ending in John, he calls them friends. Friends because he spent life with them. Friends because he had a relationship with them. And see, if we know Christ, he is our friend because he desires relationship with us. In verse 5, it says, he called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say it, it is the Lord. He wrapped his arctic garment around him for he'd taken it off and jumped into the water. Are you ready to jump into the water when Jesus calls you? Are you ready to take that next step when he says, I'm going to send you out to fish for men. I tell you, uh, launching starting point, launching this ministry, I, I've been nervous because I have an old computer. I've been nervous because I have to run the tech by myself. Uh, I'm nervous because I don't want to screw anything up or lead people wrong. And I now have a couple people who I call elders, uh, who I'm going to be responsible to theology-wise, one being my father-in-law, one being Pastor Kirk. And, and I've reached out to Pastor Bud and asked them to hold me responsible, but also to help answer those questions that I have. Because I believe we can always be learning. We can always be growing. And I hope that you too, watching this, have that need, have that want to grow and know Christ better. He jumped out of the boat and swam to Jesus because he was so excited. He caught him fishing. Well, as the story goes, uh, we find ourselves in Acts. And Jesus has spent about 40 days on earth after his resurrection. And he promises them the advocate will come. He promises them the helper. He promises them the Holy Spirit will come upon them very soon. But in Luke chapter 24, excuse me, not Luke, in uh, Acts chapter 1, they were still a little confused about what was happening. Even though they had spent time with Jesus, uh, their expectations were a little different. And I would argue many of the people following Jesus, they expected something different than what they got. See, at this time, uh, uh, Israel or Jerusalem would have been under oppression, been under Roman oppression. Um, they would have been taxed. 
beyond what they could bear. Uh, they couldn't practice the religion as freely as they would have wanted. They were under the control of the Roman authority and they wanted to break free of that authority. And they thought Jesus was the person to do that. They were looking for earthly freedom. They were looking to be removed from this, from the problems that they were having on earth. They wanted Jesus to treat the symptom. They wanted Jesus to make them free again and lead them from the Romans so that they could just keep going about life the way that they had been doing it all this time. See, in Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 3, it says, After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? So they were still looking at their earthly needs. They were still looking, they weren't looking beyond to the kingdom of God. And in verse 7, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates. The father is set by his own authority, but you will receive power. And I'm going to say it again, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and all Samaria and to the ends of the earth. See, as believers, when we accept Christ, we receive that power of the Holy Spirit. We are called to be the witnesses to the end of the earth. Why? It's so that they can experience heaven and eternity with Jesus. My earlier post, I said Jesus didn't die for the symptom. He rose for the cure. The cure is eternity in heaven with him. The cure is to be broken from the bondage of slavery so that we can live freely in relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So this today I want to leave you with that. Don't just pray for the symptom, pray for the cure. Pray that Jesus will lead you, your friends, your family to that freedom that no more being bonded by sin, the bondage of sin that you have in your life or you had in your life, pray for that redemption. You can have that if you don't already have that in your life today. So this morning, or this morning, it's nighttime. Sorry, it's been a long day. So this evening, I just want to pray for you. I want to encourage you not to go back fishing, but go forward being witnesses in the power of the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, as we begin this journey, this ministry, we all have a starting point in our lives. We all have a starting point in our faith. Some of us are looking to restart that faith. And Father, today can be the day. I pray that you open their hearts, their minds, and their souls to your word so that they can receive the power of the Holy Spirit that you have promised us. Amen. Again, everyone, thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for beginning this journey. Uh, over the next few weeks, we will uh, be talking about the starting point and how to start and restart your faith. Uh, I love everyone. I thank you again for the support and the kind words that you've all given me, and I hope you all have a good week. Thank you.